Welcome back to my channel, guys. Dr. Ricky here. Thank you for being here. Today, I have a great topic for you guys. We're doing one for the men today. Today is called gynecomastia or male enlargement of the breast. I pulled some comments from a post that I put up that has gotten over 39 million views on this topic. There's over 36,000 comments on this video. Obviously, when something goes that viral, it's impossible to address everyone's comments. But hey, let's take a look at my video and let me know what you think. So what you're seeing there was the, the liposuction device and I've made the incision and now I'm gonna take out the tissue. The left was bigger than the right. Man, I love creating content. I'm telling you guys, I love what I do and, and it's amazing to be able to bring happiness to people like this. This guy got a great result. He's a few weeks out now, so I don't really have a good after to show you yet. And he lives in California. He traveled to come here to have this done by me. So great case. So let's move on now. Let's look at comment number one and see what the first question was. Here we go. Is it so difficult to do push-ups and a good diet? Well, hey, listen, who was this? Angel. Angel. If you know me, you know I preach health and wellness. In fact, I'm starting a wellness center to help my patients be the most healthy and fit they can be before they ever think about surgery. But unfortunately in this situation, other than stopping medications that might be causing the problem, it's really a surgical problem. Some people take some hormonal therapy to reduce the amount of tissue, but that's not something that is really sustainable long-term. You don't wanna take medications for the rest of your life. It's largely a surgical operation. And again, the reason for that is gynecomastia tissue and fatty tissue are completely different. You can burn off fat, you cannot burn off gynecomastia tissue. Zach Beal Moments asks, any suggestions on how to get rid of these without a surgery? I've been struggling a little with this problem. Well, as I just stated, it really depends, Zach, what the inciting event is that's causing it. So you're gonna to wanna to go in and see your internal medicine physician or your doctor that takes care of your basic health and get an exam and get some lab tests done to see what's causing the problem. And then if there's a non-surgical option, obviously we want you to do that first. All right, user, bunch of numbers. I don't get it. <laughs> Do these things cause cancer or does cancer cause them? That's actually, it's a really great question. So this tissue has nothing to do with cancer. It does not have cancer potential. While males can get breast cancer, it's extremely rare. This has nothing to do with cancer. I can't even pronounce this, but uh, the question is, is it okay if I don't wanna remove it? That is a great question. You guys should all know that anything in, in you do in life that involves going to see a surgeon like me for elective surgery, you don't have to do anything. If this tissue is not that painful and not bothering you and you can live with it and you're okay with physically the way that things look, it won't harm you to leave it there. You can have it there for the rest of your life. That's a great question. Let's jump right into the next one. Number five, how much does this surgery usually cost? I love it, Obama underscore official 69. <laughs> All right, listen, we get this question all the time. All the time. So here's the deal. It really depends on where you live. If you're in the United States, it depends on what part of the country you're in because cost for cosmetic surgery is different wherever you go. Just to give you guys an idea, how do we break down a quote? There is the anesthesia fee, which they generally charge based on time in the operating room. There is the facility fee, which is also either charged by case or by hour that surgery center decides how they wanna recoup the money that they need to get back for the sutures that we need, the equipment that we have to use in the operating room. The third fee is usually the surgeon's fee, which is my surgical fee or the surgeon you're seeing. And then other fees you might see tacked on might be garment fees. We put you in compression garments afterwards. So how much does this cost? I would have to say on average, out the door around the country is probably six or seven thousand dollars but again that just depends on where you are a surgeon can charge whatever they want if it's a cosmetic cash pay procedure 
What I would encourage you to do is to go see your local surgeons, get some quotes from different people, see who you jive with, and just determine if that's something that you can afford. Now, in my practice, we do have financing options, but we also allow people to kind of do layaway surgery where if they wanna pay each month a little bit until they're paid off, then they come have their procedure. So great question. NYZ Judgment asked, why are they often different sizes? Is the mass often the same? As I just demonstrated in my video, the reason they're different sizes is because you can just physically have different quantities of tissue that's gynecomastia tissue in each breast. And so when there's that hormone imbalance and, and there's the stimulation of the tissue, one side can be larger than the other. And we commonly see that. Good question. Next question. These are the kinds of comments that I get on TikTok, which are unreal. So I included two here. One said chicken tenders because they thought that the tissue I took out looked like chicken tenders. And then the other one said the forbidden chicken tenders. It's hilarious. Some of the comments I get, you guys make me laugh out loud when I read them. So thanks for keeping me entertained. Ah, yeah. This guy took, you didn't spell it right, but I know what you mean. This guy took the easy way out, laugh out loud. Again, talked about this a minute ago, bud. He didn't take the easy way out. It's not fatty tissue, it's glandular tissue, and there's nothing you can do as far as working out to get rid of it. So he didn't take the easy way out. K underscore T underscore plan underscore B asked for after picks. I get this a lot. So unfortunately, guys, for a lot of these cases that I do that I put up on social media or on TikTok, it's hard for me to get you the afters, obviously, right away. I'm showing you this video that I did, and it was literally like two days after I did the procedure. So as those results roll in, um, usually around six weeks to three months are the best time to get after photos. I do try to put those up so you guys can see them. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you should, because I put a lot more stuff there for as far as before and afters go. But I try to get those up on TikTok as well. And then there's my website. Let's see what the last question is I pulled. I don't remember. Ah, yes, great one. Astrocyniquis, astrocyniquis, this looks so painful. So let's address that. What is the recovery like? So generally chest is pretty sore for about one to two, if not three weeks. It's surgery, there's no way around it. We put you in compression garments after surgery, which we ask you to wear for about six weeks. That's not some number we just pulled out from thin air. Six weeks is the amount of time it takes for collagen to be laid down into a wound. And so we want good compression to close off that space where that gynecomastia tissue existed between the nipple and the pectoralis muscle. So generally by six weeks, you're out of your compression most of the bruising and swelling is gone. And we're allowing you to get back to working out. The reason we don't like you to do any heavy lifting before six weeks is because the incisions don't have their strength for six weeks. And if you go lift heavy weights, you can literally tear your incisions open. So amazingly enough, everyone's pain thresholds are different. We have really good pain medications to accommodate for that pain to help people get through that. But most people don't even take medications, anything greater than Tylenol or something like ibuprofen. So that's a great question. And I'm glad you asked that one. So that concludes the questions that I have teed up for today. So that's it. We made it to the end of the video. Listen, my friends, as usual, thank you guys for coming by. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel, like, put some comments in the comments section. If you guys want, you can always email us. If you have videos that you're interested in us making, we'd be more than happy to make them. And again, guys, I you can follow me on my different platforms. We're trying to grow this YouTube channel. You can follow me on Instagram at Dr. Richard J. Brown. We would love to have you there. You can obviously follow me on TikTok, and there I'm at the real TikTok doc. On Twitter, I'm also at Dr. Richard J. Brown, but I'm not as active there. Appreciate you guys coming to watch this video. I hope it helps you. And as usual, Dr. Ricky, out.